everybody. Thank you very much for coming, especially so early. I hope that you enjoyed uh, last evening, those of you who were enjoying. Uh, actually, I'm not exactly from Łódź. Uh, I'm living in the Łódź area, but I'm from Szczecin, the most beautiful city in Poland. So I hope you are going to be there someday. Today I will tell you a kind of post-mortem and probably a kind of motivational speech uh, about what we are doing in Wastelands Interactive. So why did I call it Never Give Up? Uh, because our game that we have released last year was not exactly as good as we would like it to be. And what is very, very important for us, we wanted to make it better and we wanted to deliver the experience that our players deserve. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Wastelands Interactive first. Uh, we have started to make games in, back in 2006. Our first project was a kind of super huge MMO game that probably everybody of you have been working at the very beginning. Uh, actually, it was grand strategy, but, is, but it's supposed to be bigger and better than any other games on the market that day. Uh, of course, we didn't finish that project and we skipped for some, something uh, easier to complete. We are also uh, doing a third party project uh, whole project and some outsourced jobs and we are also doing some gamification for uh, various companies that are trying to do something cool for their employees. So at the very beginning we have been making uh, those cool games kind of Panzer General. Those were wargaming titles. That's a kind of niche but a very cool niche. That's something what I was playing since 1990s, early 1990s. And <coughs> that's the games I always liked. And that's something what uh, makes me feel good when I was making those games, when I were playing those games. So I can say that a game that is a kind of my passion. That's, uh, I started to make games because I loved them. Uh, we have released uh, several titles of those war games. They were covering, I think, the whole World War II era. Uh, they were pretty huge. Sometimes it takes about 100 hours to complete one campaign. And <coughs> uh, but finally, we have decided that we would like to create something else. Yeah, and that's how we started to work on a 4X game. Uh, that's been, 4X stands for uh, Explore, Expand, Exploit, and Exterminate. At the moment, those games are kind of popular. Mm, last week, we have a big hit title released by Paradox Interactive. That's called Stellaris. Hope that you have been playing this game. It's very good. But in 2012, we have uh, decided that we would like to create a uh, forex game. That's supposed to be a fantastic game. And our biggest uh, inspiration was a pretty old title called Master of Magic. Does anyone of you play that game? Yeah, I know. That's an old game. <laughs> Probably older than some of you. Uh, when we have uh, realized that uh, we are going to work on the then not uh, a game without the title. Uh, there was not really a competition on the, on the market. Age of Wonders and Endless Legends was not announced yet. So we have found out that it's a very good idea. Especially that I have met Aaron, who was working on his uh, indie project, Empires of Sorcery. Uh, that's uh, an example of the graphic. In 2012, it uh, was still not enough for the market. But he's, he, was, uh, he is a great designer, and he has designed a lot of great mechanics. 
And yes, it was 2012, we have decided the Kickstarter is the best place to check uh, is there a potential for the game. Uh, so we have prepared a pre-alpha version of the game and we have uh, made some prototypes that will help us to encourage people who are working, uh, who, who are going to uh, work it with us on the campaign and who, and for those who are going to back uh, the whole project. Uh, finally, we have made two successful campaigns for the same project in 2013. Uh, first of them raised about $70,000. Second one raised about uh, $45,000. And the second one was created because we have got a lot of feedback from a lot of people who were missing the first campaign. Um, probably you have read a lot of things about Kickstarter, how to do it, how not to do it, how cool it is. Uh, but there are two things I would like to mention that probably are still quite important for everybody who's going to do the Kickstarter. First thing is that uh, making the rewards that are engaging community are very good. Uh, I don't know, we've got like 300 people who paid extra 10 bucks just for naming the city. We've got like 100 people who paid hundreds of dollars uh, for the possibility to design a unit in the game. So that's something what you should think about when you, you would like to make a Kickstarter campaign. Also the contact with the community, uh, uh, providing them information, getting the feedback, listen to them is very important no matter uh, what kind of campaign are you going to do. So, uh, we supposed to release the game according to the Kickstarter on January 2014, uh, but unfortunately the development took us quite longer, cost us a little bit more than we expected, and we have released the early access version in uh, September 2014, and then we have released the full game in March 2015. And unfortunately, we didn't do it as good as we'd like to. Yeah, we really get a bad scoring. Uh, especially IGN gave us two out of ten, not out of five. Uh, so for me and for the team, that was kind of disaster. The general conclusion from all the reviews we have gathered, especially at the beginning, was that we made a not so bad game, but really buggy game. Uh, that was the same feedback from the reviewers, professional reviewers, editors, and from the community, both on Steam and our own forum. So that was quite devastating uh, for the whole team that was working on the game. Yeah, finally, when we have been starting to patch the game, I work on it, we have been able to rise the Metacritic score to 52, but as you probably know, it's still not too good. Yeah, you know, after the release of the game, that was not really much things that we have been able to do, so we've been fixing the bugs, and fixing the bugs, and fixing the bugs, and that well, takes like uh, two months of continuous fixing. And, yeah, we've been fixing and that's all. It uh, didn't really improve the general uh, view of the game by the gamers, by the reviewers. The sales didn't go up. So, yeah, you know, as you can read. Uh, backers hate us because we didn't deliver what we have promised. Oh, actually, it was kind of similar to the Master of Magic in terms of bugs because the old game was also very buggy. Uh, some players hate us. They were calling us liars, thieves. Yeah, that's those exactly words that were sending me in emails. Uh, we've been promising them an uh, awesome game, and they were able to play uh, like one hour with a, uh, without a crash to desktop. So, of course, this uh, leads to a poor revenue. Also, the poor reviews that I've been talking to you about. 
And, you know, when you've got a team of 15, uh, 20 people that you are working with, and when they are reading that the game they have been working for three years is not uh, as awesome as they would like accept, expect, uh, so we really need to f sit down and think what we have done, what we have been d doing wrong. Uh, morale is a very important part of the game development. When your people believe what they are doing, they are able to work much, much better. They are uh, much happier during the job. Um, so we have been sitting down and trying to analyze what we did wrong. Uh, there will be a little bit uh, about it later, but generally um, we have been very bad in planning. Um, we know that we need to make a game. We have been already making a couple of games before, but most of them were uh, smaller. Uh, easier to plan, easier to handle, uh, easier to test. And that was the first point we have uh, started doing, better planning. So in June 2015, we have implemented uh, Jira for the whole uh, team, so everybody knows much better what they are working on. And uh, have got better scope of viewing what the rest of the team is doing. So that really helped to improve things during the rest of the development. Um, yeah, and keeping the, the morale uh, in, the, in the team was uh, kind of tricky. I've been doing my best and as you will see, um, we have been focusing on a couple of things. My, me personally, uh, for the whole time of receiving those nasty emails, of the whole time of um, providing feedback about the bugs, and encouraging the team that it is worth to still work on these games, it is worth to deliver uh, the right product. Those are the things that um, I've been thinking about. First of all, of course, my family, that's always the most important thing for me. Uh, and of course, the people I'm working with, and then the game we are working at, and the people we are doing it for. So, we really tried to gather everything together, and make some action plan, what to do uh, with, with the product we have uh, been made. Um, for some time, we have been uh, thinking about the possibility to port the game for the mobile devices. And the first thing we have done was to change the name. Not because we didn't want to uh, cut us out from the world of magic, but uh, because we have found out that there is a similar title on the mobile devices already released. So we d couldn't use the world of magic. That's how Planner Conquest has been raised. Uh, so first of all, we have fixed Worlds of Magic as much as it was possible. So we gave something playable, something what didn't uh, crush it every time. It's still crashing, but you know, not so often. And we have started to work on the mobile version first, and then we wanted to re-release the game on the PC and also for consoles. Uh, we have decided for the mobile devices first because uh, we have found out it's much more demanding in terms of uh, in terms of designing the user interface. It's much harder to do the interface for the mobile device than for the uh, for the PC. It also requires much more work on the optimization part of the game. Uh, Generally, it's hard to make a game on PC that it's not running in 30 FPS. Strategy game, of course. <coughs> but uh, sticking this kind of game into the mobile device uh, was kind of tricky. 
And what is most important, we have changed our, we have really changed our uh, working uh, scheme. So at the very beginning, when we have been working on Words of Magic, we just designed a functionality and then put it in, into the game just to be able to work, just to make it uh, working together with other parts of the game. Uh, for working on Planar Conquest, we have uh, put one person who was responsible only for designing the user interface. That was his own responsibility. And he, of course, he needed to cooperate with the uh, gameplay designer. He was, he's got his own uh, artist who was creating the new user interface. He's got his own programmer who was implementing the interface. But he was only responsible for making sure that the new user interface will be good and will be uh, actually uh, responsible enough for the players. Uh, another part of the uh, new working scheme uh, was, of course, uh, much more focusing on testing the product. That's quite obvious, but uh, from our experience and from our talks with other developers, it quite often seems that uh, they're not really spending enough time. And it's not uh, only our own internal testing. It's also um, inviting quite random people to play your game, to observe them, to see where is the breaking point of them uh, working uh, with the specific functionalities of the games. Um, we've been working on this with uh, Techland and uh, Andrzej Koloska, I think he's not here today, uh, was really helpful on that. He really did, uh, he really did an awesome job in helping us uh, to get a good quality product. Yeah, it turned out when the game was released, uh, we have gathered much better scoring. Um, it's over four on both uh, platforms, so I think it's, uh, it's quite good. The only one for the Android version was because we, at the beginning, we have lacking the Polish version of the game. And currently we are preparing to release the uh, PC version of the game. And at the moment we are doing the beta testing. So far, from the beta testers, we are receiving uh, pretty good feedback. All of them are the people who were uh, playing the Worlds of Magic, so they know the flaws. They know how bad were the parts of the game. And uh, all of them are confirming there is a much uh, improvement into, into the gameplay, in the stability, in the user interface, and the AI. So those are all the four things we've been working uh, on the relaunching the game. And that's a kind of interesting probably for some of you. Um, the total budget of those two titles, because it's really hard to separate the one from the other, was $600,000. Um, so some of that was raised on Kickstarter. Some of those money came from selling the, uh, the game, the Words of Magic. And some of those was from selling the other titles we have released. Uh, what is kind of interesting that almost 30% people uh, on the mobile devices is buying the DLC that is much more expensive than the game itself. Uh, so we see there is a potential for uh, making uh, extra content for this kind of games. And to make a breaking point, so to earn those $600,000 in total, we need to sell 25,000 more uh, Planar Conquest uh, games. In general, that's all. Uh, if you've got some questions regarding what we've been doing or how we've been doing something, it's your time to ask. Uh, 
uh, we didn't expect that it was so buggy. That's the one of the flaws. Um, we, we really thought the game is not so buggy as it was. Uh, it was not enough uh, beta testing. Uh, we, the game is pretty huge. Uh, it's a complete forex game. Uh, there is a lot of functionalities. Of course, some of those bugs were very obvious and it's completely our fault that we have skipped them. But some of them were like, you know, build three cities, uh, create specific units uh, in those cities, and then equip one, one of them with sword and go attacking a dragon or cast some spell. Uh, so, you know, when you've got a team of 15 people, uh, it's really hard to test all the possible outcomes. Uh, it's, it's not comparable when you've got like a couple of thousand of players in the game. Yes, Excel. <laughs> yeah, J Jira, Jira is a great tool. Uh, probably there are a couple of different tools, but if you want to see the whole scope of the project, if you want to see whole team, what they are doing, it's really good to implement something like that. It's, it's really saves a lot of time of managing the team. It really saves a lot of time for the team itself. So. Uh, we are also using a uh, Trello for smaller tasks uh, for for smaller teams. For example, like a programmer, dev designer, and artist are working on UI. They've got a little Trello, so it's much more better to uh, send uh, forward and back some specific uh, some specific tasks between them. But they are still uh, having a bigger task on on Trello. So when something is on, on Jira, some s when something is close, it's still it's still uh, visible on on Jira. to cover the whole costs. Uh, I don't know, there is uh, 35,000 people who got uh, Worlds of Magic on wish list. So technically, if the game will be good, it should take like two, three months. If the game will be bad again, probably I will have to close the company, so it doesn't matter then, really. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that really depends on the game. Um, one of our games has paid back in less than a day because it was uh, on the engine we already have and the amount of work was not too much. So yeah, that, that really depends. But in this example, I'm hoping to, to get it back in about three months. Uh, actually, not really because as I said, we are doing some outsource jobs. Currently, we are working on the uh, on the project uh, for one publisher. That's a whole project uh, work. We are w doing some outsource in GFX for the second publisher. Yeah, so we are not going to close the company literally, but uh, probably we are not going to work on our own project for some time. The money that we have spent, they are spent, so it will be great to get them back, but uh, it, it doesn't, yeah, it's, it's more a matter of um, good name of the Wasteland Interactive, not, not of the money itself. Because we can't release bad games, this, this game bad twice in a row, so. Any other questions? Yeah, don't be scared, you can ask me about money and other things, so yeah. Uh, are there any people who are planning to release their game in about two, three months? Nobody? In about half year? So test it. Test it a couple of times. Send me a beta version. <laughs> I will look for bugs, so. Yeah, that's, that's really a thing that we have screwed up. And there are a couple of titles of the other publishers I can tell you they didn't do the beta testing good enough. Some of those games were sell well, some of them didn't sell. Be sure to test the game. Yeah. 
No, we don't crunch. We don't crunch. Okay, actually, there was one time when we've been sitting, me and animator, for 24 hours in the office. And there was one time when the whole team was sitting in the office for like 13 hours in a row. So, yeah, we don't crunch. Um, very rarely we have been working more than the 20 days in a month. That's because crunch is not, yeah, when you have to, then you crunch, but we don't crunch. Okay, thank you very much for coming. If you would like to ask me something privately, don't hesitate to catch me here or send me an email. Thank you very much.